Hello everyone. Welcome to a video on individualized education program which is also known as the individualized education plan. This plan is considered the heart and soul of inclusive education. So join me Dr. Sunanda Roy to understand its components and how this important document is designed and generated. An individualized education plan or the individualized education program is a document which is developed for the differently abled students to help them frame their academic goals and the methods to attain these goals. The IEP is prepared to ensure their education goals are achieved. The history of IEP can be traced back to the 1970s. It was really the parents of the differently abled children who encouraged Western legislators to adopt the Education for All Handicapped Children Act, also known as the EAHCA, back in 1975. This legislation required school, the school districts to include and educate students with special needs and to create specialized academic plans for them. In 1990, the EAHCA was renamed the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, also known as IDEA. The purpose of IEP is always the same, that is, to tailor an educational plan for the child so that he or she can reach his or her full potential. Before developing the IEP, assessment of students having the challenges to attain their academic goal is done. The, the assessment is done for different motor skills, academics and social skills. Motor skills may include hand and eye coordination, finger dexterity, etc. The IEP could deal with fine motor skills like working with clay or folding paper to make paper planes. Academic assessment consists of performance of the student in different school subjects. Hence, subject-related difficulties are considered in IEPs related with academic skills. It could also include helping students learn proper study habits. Academic problems like spelling errors, um, illegible handwriting and inability in reading are dealt with while preparing the IEP. Social skills like communication, interpersonal relations, etc. are also assessed. IEPs planned for improving social skills focus on improving interpersonal behavior of students. This is an area which is a big problem with differently abled students or students with disabilities as they are not very openly accepted by their peers due to their challenges. The IEP is based on these assessments. The process of developing an IEP is very systematic. It consists of four very clearly defined steps. Let's see what each of these steps include. The first step is determining eligibility for services. Here students are selected for developing the IEP. The IEP is a very comprehensive program which is a tailor-made program for each student, as was mentioned earlier. Such plans cannot be prepared for every student. Before a student can receive special education services provided under the IEP, he or she must be evaluated for eligibility. The IDEA has given 13 categories under which a child can receive these services. The categories of students with disabilities are Autism Syndrome Disorder, Deaf Blindedness, Deafness, Emotional Disturbance, Hearing Impaired, Intellectual Disability, Multiple Disabilities, Orthopedic Impairment, 
other health impairment, specific learning disability, speech or language impairment, traumatic brain injury and visual impairment. The next big question is how to get a child or student evaluated for eligibility. Here, the parents who are interested in getting an IEP prepared for their wards can contact the child's teacher, the school psychologist or the principal of the school. A group of qualified personnel like the counsellors, psychiatrists, etc. will decide whether to evaluate or not and create a plan for evaluation for the child. Teachers can also refer the students for evaluation, but this should happen after attempts have been made to remedy problems without the special education services. The school's student services team, also known as the SST, holds a meeting to discuss the student's performance. In the meeting, the class teacher could bring work samples and other data such as reading and math scores, behavioral charts and writing samples. The evaluation team can th then decide whether to refer the child for any evaluation or suggest that the child continue without special education services. If the team suspects that a child has a learning or behavioral impairment, it will work together to determine what tests and data will be gathered. No testing can be done or even begun until the parent consent by giving written permission to evaluate their children. Following the testing and gathering of the existing data, the evaluation team will meet again to discuss the results. Any time the decisions are made regarding evaluation, the parent is invited to participate. Each of the 13 categories of disability included in the idea has unique qualifications requirements. There are some diagnoses that teachers and school psychologists are not qualified to make like um, attention deficit hyperactive disorder or uh, autism spectrum disorder. And most physical and development delays require medical diagnosis. The bottom line is that the student is selected only if the disability has an impact on the student's education and the student must be in need of specially designed instruction. Step two is to develop the IEP. After a thorough and full individual education and evaluation in the IEP meeting, it is determined that the child has one of the disabilities listed in IDEA and needs special education and related services. Within 30 calendar days, the next IEP meeting must be held. A child's IEP must also be reviewed at least annually thereafter to determine whether the annual goals are being achieved and must be revised as per the needs of the child. It must be noted that the IEP is a cooperative effort in framing a plan of action with the help of the differently abled students' parents to attain their goals. The meeting for developing the IEP consists of different people. The special education teacher, data, test data interpreter, the general education teacher, of course the parent and the child especially if the child is 16 years and above. Usually, younger students are not included in these meetings as they may not be matured enough to understand the details of these discussions. Along with them, the school psychologists 
and service providers such as speech and language specialists and occupational therapists are also included in the IEP meetings. All these people are involved in the individualized education program. We have been talking about the individualized education program. So let's look inside the IEP and go through its components in detail. The IEP consists of the child's present levels of academic achievement and functional performance, describing how the child is currently doing in school and how the child's disability affects his or her involvement and progress in the general curriculum. Next, the annual goals for the child according to what parents and the school team think he or she can reasonably accomplish in a year is included. This also includes the special education and related services which is to be provided to the child. Like for example, supplementary aids and services such as communication devices or assistive technologies. Details regarding the changes in the program or supports for school personnel, for example, getting additional support from therapists or psychiatrists are also included in the IEP. Also, how much of the school day the child will be educated separately from non-disabled children or not participate in extracurricular or other non-academic activities such as lunch or clubs are also enlisted. However, it should be noted that this is kept to the bare minimum as inclusion does not encourage any kind of segregation. Details regarding when services or modifications required to test the child's needs are to be done is also included. The child may have to be administered modified formative and even sometimes summative evaluation techniques different from the ones used for the rest of the peers. This is also noted and this is regarding the assessment of the child during the internal exams as well as the final examinations. Details regarding when services, accommodations and modifications will begin, how often they will be provided, where they will be provided and for how long they will last are also included in the IEP. Finally, the procedure of how school personnel will measure the child's progress towards the annual goals is also chalked out. This requires a separate evaluation plan for the child. So the IEP consists of a comprehensive and wide range of information regarding the differently able child. Step 3 is to implement the IEP. The program is implemented using the various activities planned in the IEP. The teacher may use instructional strategies like remedial teaching or use additional audiovisual aids as per the needs of the student. The progress of the student is measured through both formative and summative assessments. That is, these assessments which are done time to time to keep a check on the student's achievements and advancements. On the basis of the information obtained through these assessments, the IEP is adjusted. Adjustments are made in terms of goals, expectations, strategies and supports as and when necessary. The fourth step is follow-up. The IEP should not be the only time that teachers, parents and other service providers discuss a child's progress. Informal meetings may be held between the members of the IEP to check on the child's progress. The lines of communication between the IEP members especially the teacher and parents, must be open at all times. Thus, continuous follow-up is conducted 
to find out if the effectiveness of the IEP is continuing and lasting. The IEP is a working document and can be modified and changed as needed throughout the school year. These needs may keep changing depending on the progress of the child which are checked weekly or monthly. So the short term goals may also change. These changes should be done smoothly without any gaps. So these were the four steps in preparing the IEP or the Individualized Education Program. With every step, the short term goals may undergo change. So the original IEP may not remain the same over a period of time. It is a flexible document like the inclusive education system which is also flexible according to the needs of the students. Hence the IEP is considered as an important part of inclusive education. So this was all about individualized education plan also known as IEP. These are the references used to create this video. You will find the links in the description box for further reading. IEPs include various instructional strategies which are used in inclusive education like remedial teaching, team teaching, etc. and various assistive technologies also. Please watch my videos on these topics. The links are given in the description box and on the screen. I hope you liked this video. Do remember to like and share the video and also to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching the video.